Yeah, what we hear is we have a um, series of four different funding scenarios for the water rate increase. Uh, and when we say water rate increase and funding scenarios, I just want to make it clear this covers operational to include contractual, to include our capital, to include wages, um, and also includes the tower maintenance. We do know um, earlier in the year we had discovered that our water uh, towers haven't been maintained over the course of the past 32 years, I think, to be specific. So we need to find some way to enter into some sort of agreement, whether it be through the tower maintenance or through the bidding uh, that council had us look into doing. Um, but basically, we are at a point in time to where a decision needs to be made. Um, I think we've got four valuable options for council to ponder over. Um, I think it's very straightforward. Um, hopefully, we've had time to review the reports from our um, from the tower inspection we have. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on the tower inspections, just so we have it on the record. Interior is. Um, um, if you go to page 10, um, when you requested to have TIC come in and do the report, you kind of want to know the, the, um, what the condition of the tank was before we went into asset management uh, earlier this year. And on page 10, exterior coating condition. The coating on the exterior of the tank appeared to be in fair to poor condition. It was not providing adequate protection from corrosion to the steel. Um, some things were in decent shape, but that is basically your outside shell. And on page 13, that is your interior coating condition. The coating on the interior surfaces of the tank appeared to be in poor condition. It was not providing adequate corrosion protection to the underlying steel. Uh, the interior coating exhibited good adhesion to the underlying coating. Um, the coating appeared to be in an epoxy coating system, just like the exterior. Uh, there seems to be uh, decent adhesion where that gentleman had talked to you guys earlier in that asset management that they could probably overcoat um, that tank. But that just gives you, in a nutshell, um, the quality of the exterior and the quality of the interior. And that was a full drain inspection. I was, uh, Mr. Ticker, um, I was actually shocked with that report as far as the, 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 the looks of the inside of the tank. I was expecting it to be like a dim color on the inside. It actually looked, I'm assuming it looked white at least in the picture. Yeah, 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 we have clean water. The water is clean, so you won't get the dingy look. It's the quality of the paint adhere, adhering to the uh, to the steel and what's underneath it. Right. What was happening is the water, if they were to send a diver in, and this is why it was good that we didn't go this route, is when you look at the inside of the tank, it'll look good. You pull the water off it, you just took the pressure off that paint, and that paint can just start pulling away from the structure. And that's what they were starting to experience. There, there is some spalling, or what they call it bubbling, that is definitely in there right now. Okay. Um, also, you guys, do how often you have to test on the water coming out of the tank going into the system? Uh, I don't know specifically out of the tank, per se, but we do six bacteria tests a month. And sometimes I think it comes out of the tap right there. So it's it's random, but I think it is one of our normal sites. Um, one of the things that we were asking about, I remember, is um, the cost and and asking for other bids. Did this go out for bids? No. There, the first part that I brought to council's attention initially was an asset management program where you do not go out for bid, and each and every phase of that project was included in that price, from the inspection to the um, inspection of the work, the work that they do, and every bit of work that they do during their time of that contract. Um, with this inspection, it's the first phase. If you want to, if you definitely want to get a second opinion, and take it out for bids, and that is where you would take and hire similar to this same company. Uh -huh. uh, and it's around $50,000 where you basically hire the engineer, they design the plans, and then they'll, we'll put it out for bid for a specific contractor, low bid probably, to come in and do the job, they inspect it for X amount of dollars. And in their tower inspection, in there they noticed they said it was about $800,000 is what they're, what they're kind of 
see an average bids go for for that size of structure. Um, we even looked at that number and it kind of seems high too for a bidding cost. We think it would be less than 800,000, but definitely the asset management was even way less than that because they didn't take into account the tank mixer that will go into that tower either. So they were at 800,000 just for painting. So we thought 700,000 would be a fair value for painting um, for bids, but then you have to add the engineering costs of about 50,000, and then you have to add the tank mixer, which runs about 40,000 to have that done. And then we were looking to try to do the electrical work in-house, um, which was, uh, it could be a couple hundred bucks to maybe a thousand bucks to do that. just to weld a ladder to make it OSHA. Mm -hmm. There was plenty more of those items that you had seen on the Adam Street report from before in a previous inspection that will have to be done if we decide to keep that tank. Uh, but this doesn't have to do with the tank, but it does have to do with the well drilling. I know that that's added into this here in some of those ones, the well drilling. In, in the funding scenarios. The funding scenarios. Correct. Yes, it is. Yes. And how Six wells, seven wells. We're currently on basically three and a quarter wells. We have four. We have four active wells, and one of those wells is down to about 25 percent of its life expectancy. Well, it's actually past its official life expectancy. Um, it was normally about, a, about 450 to 600 gallon a minute well. We're doing about 200. Okay. Now, can you explain? You know, and I, I know this has been explained to me many times. You know why we have so many wells. Uh, you have to have redundancy. Now, we are a 1.2 million gallon a day plant. It was built for expansion. So to be able to produce that, um, it takes 694 gallons per minute to give you 1 million gallons in a day. And we have two wells that produce average of 600 each. And then we have one that's only 200 and one that's about uh, 700. So you always run two wells at a time um, because if one goes out, you always have a redundant well behind you. Um, so we run in pairs. If one goes down, you're back to one and run, running one well, or we alternate wells. And because our wells are in such close proximity of, of each other, we no longer have easements that the EPA will allow us to relocate a well within our same area. So well four, they trade up by State Route 235. Its current zone, um, uh, it's just, I just blanked. Uh, isolation radius, it goes into State Route 235 and they will not allow us to pull that well and re-drill it or drill it deeper, which is what I initially tried to get done, but they won't allow it. So we have to look at possibly some property behind it or relocating it to where if you get a spill off 235 or any kind of contamination, gasoline, whatever it is, right now has potential to contaminate all four wells. Or if you get another well way away from the site, then you have safety, a safety valve there. So are you still thinking about doing it there at the ballpark? Or when you say further away, what are you talking about? We've looked all the way from close to the golf course to near the creek, away from it. On the other side would be kind of behind uh, Hensley property. We've looked at various locations there. We've looked at um, up on uh, at the curb of Addison. Uh, everywhere we have to look is pretty far away. Cities, they are nowhere near there. They could be miles apart. We're just hopefully we can get it within a couple thousand feet. Okay, so the cost of that, if I remember right, was a hundred and some thousand dollars. Is what usually it takes to get a well in without electric to it, electric and the, the piping. See, 100, 125,000. It, it ranges on driller, uh, the type of material that you're going through. I mean, the guards are normally drilled 100 feet. So people think residential well. 60, 65 feet. This is nothing like it. These are a minimum. Oh, I think put that back in. Thank you. Uh, our wells are a minimum of 10 inches diameter and larger. A residential well is six. Okay. Another thing, um, didn't we have the last time, they, they get cleaned out every now and then, don't they? Within every five years, every well gets cleaned. Yeah, but we always have trouble with pumps when they, when they get cleaned out. Well, we always have trouble with well four. 
floor with its production always. It, it, we just clean it for to hopefully keep what we got. And um, a life expectancy of a pump and motor is seven years. Um, that's, that's all it does, it just runs. So sometimes we'll have to replace the pump. We get lucky, like we just did well six this year. Um, we had a little bit of work on a pump, but we didn't have to replace the motor. So we're, we're probably, if not before the next cleaning, well, within the next five years, we'll, we'll probably have to put a new motor on it. But that, that, that's going to be almost every time.
historically speaking, this city has chunk changed it over to the next year. And those practices need to stop. Um, if you look at your ending balances in the memo where I said pay attention to your ending balances, those are crucial. Every year we should be starting at zero opposed to using whatever reserves we had last year to help get it through through this year. What this does is it sets up your water department to be able to handle massive breaks in the system. If the EPA comes and says, you guys got to hire two more people, take your minimum staffing levels now, this will allow us to do this. The city has to get past the practice of getting by by the skin of their teeth year to year, especially with your enterprise funds. Our general fund did it for a little bit. We're getting out of that. These are enterprise funds. They need to be self-supported. This is a service that you turn it on, you get it, you pay for it. Enterprise funds are not supposed to be supplemented by your general fund. Um, they are again supposed to be self-supported. But to reiterate, we need to get past the may barely making it year by year. And I would like to point out a few things with these scenarios. In 2026, the loan for the water plant will be gone. That's the $217,249 that the city wanted to make that massive plant down there. What, we're about 60% capacity? Oh, it, we're about uh, 45. 45% capacity, so we're not even utilizing half of it. We put into place that the city should have been on this maintenance program for the past 30 years. Those two things would have taken into account. We would not be in the situation we are in now. So basically this council and this administration, we are doing the right thing. And sometimes it takes a hard decision by seven people who are elected to make the right decisions to move forward. No one likes to see these massive increases, but I will say we will not be the first city to raise them. Pick up the paper nowadays. West Carrollton just, I think, raised theirs 40%. Springfield, I think, just raised their 40, 30 or 40%. Montgomery County they just did the same thing. So um, it's not just us in this unique place. And I hate to say it like this, but this is the truth. We, how much, how much did we amend our revenue by this year for gallons that we anticipated to get, but we didn't? About almost fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. We've had to go back and say, all right, the trend is we're not. People aren't using what they use, but that's not the issue. The issue is. People nowadays have high efficiency washers and dryers, toilets, shower heads, you name it. If it, water comes out of it, there's a little thing you can get on it to make it more energy efficient. I should tell you that even though people are conserving, we still have operation, operational costs to hit, to include capital, to include your man hours, to include you know, things that we're discussing now. So unfortunately, this seven person elected body has a very difficult decision to make. <laughs> Unfortunately, it needs to be made. But again, we are at that critical point to where we need to stop band-aiding things and moving forward and operate as a city should operate. Every year at the end of the year, whatever we have left over needs to go to Star Ohio. We need to make interest off that for that particular fund and we start new next year. I can't remember the last time we were able to do that. And that practice of using your carryover balance, what that's going to do, some point in time, you're not going to have anything to carry over. We're going to be like that at the end of this year or next year. We're going to barely make it. So the first plan option in A would increase overall the course of the uh, year. It would be a 37% increase. And that has uh, no grant or loan from the general fund. But when we grant money from the general fund, it's 39% increase. Can you tell me why the 2% difference between options A and option C? No, because when you start this in a couple of years, you see the price difference, 125000 versus 115500 So that's your difference right there, because if you wait a couple of years, you can assume the cost of doing business is also going to go up. Well, it's 115 on option C, so it'd be cheaper And I also think that you're looking at your percentages wrong. You're looking as a group to where I think you need to split them out year by year. Well, I mean, it's still going to be a full percentage. As a fee economic student, uh, at 125, uh, 125000 a year, spread across 
same amount of time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same amount of time for one, two, three, four, five. If we were to clamp that 115 out in the first year, and then you would typically have that 39% lower over the course of the cycle. What he's saying is. What, what numbers, what letters are you on? A, a and C. C. A is 125 starting in 2020. Yeah. You want to know why? Five. This one? Which and the rate you want to go is around 37 water so. grant. But here we're the grant from the general fund. You, you add these up and it's 39. Okay. Right. He said this is a 20, 35, 39%. You see what I'm saying? We're giving the, we're giving the increase for the loan. loan. So it should be lower that we're giving the fund money. It's one of the rate it should come to So, because whenever you take and blank these out and you and you reduce. 
reduce that amount in that line item, and then you take the percentage and you add it. Well, and I don't use percentages in these. Those are just for guidelines. It's the dollar amounts here. Is whether you move these numbers, Excel automatically calculates what your total is going to be for your revenues and expenditures. And if the if the ending fund balance, what you would call your carryover, was a negative, I'd have to adjust it. it regardless of where we where we think it comes out of that year.
get your cover. Correct? And again, my problem is this one, option A, at 20%, you're saying right out of the gate we're going to be able to pay that 125 in 2020. I mean, where's all this money just going? And when does those rates, and when, when does age rates go to? Do you see that 2010, 5, and 2? Yes. And you see the 2015, 2, and 2? Say it again, Randy, I didn't hear you. This goes beyond just the tank. This covers your capital, this covers all operations. Okay, so when you do this kind of stuff, you need to account for unforeseen capital projects. You need to account for unforeseen breakage. So the spiel that I gave about the city going year to year, just getting by, that equates to what we're doing here now. I understand the confusion. It took me minutes to really figure it out. That's what it is. If you're loaning it from the general fund, and I see your logic, I see everyone's point. You still have to have money in there from 2022 on to 2023 to make that payment. You don't have that payment. You need to look at your ending balances and how that affects the year in and year out. Is that correct? Yeah, I was going to say, real quick, take a look at your consumer charge. What phone are you looking at now? Um, it, just the first one, A. Okay, they're in your revenue. On 2018, we would project bringing in 874000 Okay, with, the, with that rate increase. Then the next year, with the additional increase, it bring in 961. Then a million nine, and then a million twenty nine. Okay. This is a four year rate increase. So you're at a million twenty nine. Your revenue never goes up, but the expenditures continue to go up. So now if you have increased expenditures above your revenues, you took the front load that you got initially in that 20 that 20% and the 10% to help cover you down the road. Until these big loans are paid off, including the tenant. So when your revenue flattens out and you look at your expenditures, the expenditures never go down. The expenditures keep going up. So if I was able to, say, hold this tower off for another 10 years, not, not going to happen, but let's say it was 10 years, then you might be able to go 5, 5, 5, 2, 2, and get it worked up there to where you now have the revenue to take care of it down the road, where this way we, we had to front load it and not, let's say, stretch out the increase. It had to be so abrupt. And because we, we want to do this increase and not, say, do perpetual and do a 2% here on out, which has always been a good thing to have a little bit coming in. But once your revenues flatten out, um, be, look at, like, say, on the A, 2025, look at your ending fund balance, 39000 there at the bottom. That is all after all those increases, after paying that last year of tower, and then look at the next year, we go to 130 because we quit paying the tower. Look at the next year, then when we stop paying the water loan payment. Okay. Only because we're paying so much, you have to front load this increase to cover it in the short term. I don't have 15 years to build this up. That, that, that's, the, that's the hard thing with um, putting all the revenues in the front of it to help carry you on the back end. So if I drop that 2% that you're talking about on that one site on the Excel, it automatically puts a negative in a couple of my fund balances. So try to do the minimum, but still keep some sort of a fund balance in there, and it just wouldn't allow me. You had to add another, and 2% was it. you want to know the structure is 50 years um, plants and pumps 7 to 10 uh, the equipment is usually 20 that's inside uh, it's, it's all variable but the building itself will be around for a while so, so if it's paid off in 2025 how many years after that before we have to do major 2026 <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, it will be 20 years old at that point <clears throat> so we so theoretically we have 30 years left the building. For, yeah, you know, you're, yeah, your wearable items. Yep. Did you say 30 years? Pardon? Did you say 30? 30 years on the We have 30 years left. Oh, God. God. I want to say 30, 30 years to so pay that loan's paid off. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay, 30 years sorry. years left that we're not paying a loan. But do we now, if I remember at the meeting, you said that there are some attentions that need to be made now for that. 
we are, we are working with the high service pump room. We are working inside the plant to make sure things get have longevity to them. Because obviously we're paying on a plant and some of that $217,000 you're paying for, we've already replaced the pump and a motor that you're still paying for. The nature of an enterprise fund. So I don't want to get into loans down the road. I don't like that. I would like to have a reserve of cash to say when that pump goes down, I have 15,000, go pay for that pump, not go loan 15,000 and that pump go out two years later. Now I'm still paying on that 15,000 and now I'm rebuilding it again. So the goal is to pay for the piece of equipment, get it up, get it done, and then the next time it breaks, you pay for it again. And we're not like that. Right now we're paying for a plant, still got 10 years left, and we've already repaired and replaced some equipment in there. And honestly, council, these could very well be higher. If you look at your ending fund balance until that loan's paid off, you're not really breaking a hundred thousand dollars carryover unless you choose option A. So even with all these rate increases and you're still not, your ending balance is still below a hundred thousand dollars in three fourths out of these scenarios, that should tell you something. This water plant has been neglected for 30 years. It's that simple. I mean, that water plant, I'm sorry, but these water towers and the capital programs, the city has not had the money to carry over to do these things. So we literally have been band-aiding the water and quite frankly, the wastewater plant for the longest time. Again, these percentages could be higher to allow for us to carry that over. You know, like I said, this is not, the current council's fault. This is not the current administration's fault. This is a fault of, a, of the city as a whole. But when you look at what you need to do in a capital, you need to look at your operation, you need to look at your bottom line and how that all plays in. All this is very confusing if you don't work on it day in and day out. You're not taking into account what you have to carry over to pay for that first payment <coughs> next year. And I get why there was confusion, but at the end of the day, we need to ask ourselves, are we truly comfortable with these ending back fund balances? Because the moment that a $75,000 piece breaks, guess who's going to be paying for it? The general fund. So we need to get past those times and age where, where the city's band-aiding things. It just needs to stop. That's not good fiscal practices, to be honest with you. And we have the ability here to start taking it in that right direction. And I firmly believe once 2026 sits and that $217,000 a year is no longer there, if you look at 2026 and it keeps on going up, 424,000, 704, 968, B, 439,000, 747, 2028, $1 million. That's when you guys come back to the council and say, hey, we're going to decrease your rates. We're going to figure out what we need to carry over. We may be able to decrease your rates for a year or two, or we can at least freeze them for the next five. But this council has the power and authority to make a decision that's going to put this water plant in a much better position, not only from a working condition, but also from a health, safety, and sanitation issue. You guys were elected to make these tough decisions. It's a tough decision to make. We need to make one very, very, very soon. But the numbers don't lie in these situations. You know, and to be honest with you, anything past 2018, 2019 with your expenses, it's a crapshoot. We're just estimating the best we can. We don't know what's going to come down as far as contractual expenses. We don't know what the EPA is going to mandate us to do. So we need to have also a nest egg in here to help us get through. But the turning point for this city and this water plant is going to be 2026. We're at 45 percent max capacity right now for a water plant that the city wanted to make a Cadillac of a water plant to anticipate all this growth in the city. Well, that growth never came. Well, we're paying for it. And that's exactly the position we're in now. I wanted to let you know one small thing too. We, what, the hydrants, we got five hydrants done this year. And uh, so it's a little over $10,000. The one hydrant that we replaced on Drake took six valves to shut off, to do one hydrant. And the hydrant has its own watch valve. Those valves are $5,000 a piece to replace. And we had to work almost all six an hour a piece to up, down, up, down, and they could break any time. That's the problem we have is we have some 1950s, doesn't seem old, but we have valves in there that just are questionable. So what we don't want to get into is have a blowout and we drain a tower and we can't valve things down. The superintendent and I have talked and we're like, boy, it'd be nice to go and start doing a valve replacement. That's kind of, I wouldn't say it's really in here, but I think we could start on it. 
but we do have some serious issues with valves. That's one of my big things is if a 16 inch starts blowing, it's fairly new, it's mid 90s, but they're butterfly valves. Whoever designed to put this thing in didn't put gate valves, which are meant to shut off water. Uh, butterfly valves are not meant to shut water. They're meant to throttle water or regulate water. Well, so if we have a 16 blow, thank God we have it yet. Um, we dread that. I mean, we really do. We sit there at night wondering, this 10 inch, this 12 inch just goes, can we valve it down? You know, without getting a company in. Because a, a valve insertion for a 12 inch right now, we just got a price. Because our high service pump room, that's one of our projects in here. We didn't get to walk through in our tours. It's a rust bucket. $18,000 to put one 12 inch uh, hydro valve in. Because right now we can't shut the old high service pump room off to the system. When they designed it, they didn't put a valve in there. So before we do any maintenance to this, tear any pipes out, we have to spend eighteen thousand dollars just to put a valve in. The rest of the project is going to be about thirty thousand. The whole, all that, that's all the plumbing. But eighteen thousand just to, just for us to even perform maintenance on it. So you know we're we're kind of stuck on the day something blows, we're going to have a company in. Instead of being eighteen, you're going to pay that service for them to come in on an emergency. And then the general fund are out to pay it, or we're out to take out a loan which is going to increase your, we can pass that loan debt on to the consumers. So we're just in a unique position right now. Um, right now we staff three full-time people at the water plant. Ideologically, it should be four. So the three that we do have, um, they do the best they can, um, but I'm sure some things get put on hold and some things prior, prior, prioritize over others. Um, the truck, the dump truck, so 2001, okay, we took the utility body, rusted out, we put a dump body on it. So we're making, we're making it extend. We didn't go buy a whole new truck. Uh, the van was from the surplus up in Columbus. Uh, it was an old Ohio State Patrol jailbird van, I guess. You know, it finally rusted out. It's one of the ones going on gov deal. So we don't buy all new, you know, for everything. We've been trying to keep the minimum down, but when those guys go out to a water main break and the truck, which happens, you know, can happen a lot, is break down, then we're, we're stuck with our pumps and stuff. So, Kelly, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, I don't even mean to I just no, literally right. just came up. I know we redid these because of loss of revenue. But revenue was the same. Are these increases much different than the first time we brought them to city council? Not the first one. No. So basically, it's the same stuff, just minus the loss of revenue that we've had to equate for from the first time. And speaking of loss of revenue, with Bell Manor and Debut, they had X their each bill. With them combined as one. Now, people could correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're still housing about the same people, same employees. They. 30-40% less water usage together than what they were separate. So we are seeing efficiency big time um, with, with their combined facility. Mm -hmm. They're old, there's an aging facility, leaks, not high efficiency stuff. And new toilets, new, new machines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so someone, in poor use of less water, you're talking about less revenue. I mean, don't you, I don't know how the water comes but don't you use just not as much water? And it is. Oh, our, our flows have been down in high fours before. It wasn't. It was always around six to seven hundred thousand a day back when I first got hired on at the city in two thousand. When I was working down at the maintenance garage, I'd always hear those numbers. When we had that leak detection four years ago, five years ago, we took that down to one time. I think we almost hit four hundred. Yeah. And this is every day. So we've we've got our leaks under control now. So now we put new meters to everybody. And we're supposed to be more accurate than what we were before. And they de they definitely are. We've hit some resident some uh, businesses mm -hmm. with higher bills. On the flip side of that, the residential properties that always had leaks, paid for them for three months, don't have those leaks anymore because Kathy, almost on a monthly basis, we get our high usage report, get a leaks. Hey, you got a leak? They fix it. Oh, oh yeah. And so we're. You know, we make money on residential properties leaking. I mean, we do, but that's not the right thing. So now we're actually, for high efficiency, you're kind of getting penalized because you have the facility in place, you have the infrastructure in place. You, ha you have to pay for it whether you're efficient or not. Uh, if I remember right, you know, one of the reasons for the meters is that you wanted to see exactly where we were at. Oh, that would be part of it, yes. Because we, you know, the meters were all. Sometimes it wasn't registering correctly. I'm talking to Scott. Sometimes he was telling me how you know it was going around. Oh, we got people that monitor.
monitor their own meters. They pick up a flyer and they monitor it daily, weekly. They know what's going on. So yeah, they know when they're flushing that toilet, they got to leave that little symbol because they shut it off. So yes, I mean, on the back end, we picked up some revenue for accuracy, but then we fixed people's leaks, helped them get them caught early enough and we're losing that. Now, um, I think you mentioned before, to replace a, a water main you know, on the streets is what, would you say, uh, how much a foot? It, it ranges, it could be 50 to to $100 a foot. Okay. If these pass, does that have a place on a, a trail possibly in the future to work in paving or reconstruction on the street that we could redo an entire line on the one street? I could probably get a little bit of funds, but when I know I'm doing that, I'm going after some grant funds, mm -hmm. OPWC. Here, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's just because that's something I always worry. I mean, you can pay these new roads, and then a month later you're digging them up because old lines are busted. Yeah, and, re and remember this: I can't apply for grants without matching funds because no grant comes free as far as OPWC. Now I can get a hundred thousand, get maybe get two hundred thousand. Most water or wastewater projects aren't that cheap. They start at five hundred, a million. So when I go for those, if I know there's no water revenue coming in at that time, I can't apply for a grant because I don't have the other half to pay for it, like Church Street. Um, I want to get Church Street, at least milled and filled, but like you said, it's it, I got so many laterals that go bad. We, we All those ditches we got going across there, I need to replace those, um, those service lines to our valves because they're all galvanized. Well, I can get a grant. I can get quite a bit of it covered, but right now I have no local funds to put with that grant for the project. said on uh, scenario A would be, in your opinion, the best one, but then nothing happens with the water tower in 2020. Is that water tower able to wait three years? Or? Well, we have the recommendation here. Um, when I said, I think the exterior is two years, and then the interior is one or two, or is that switched? Mm -hmm. Um, it's a gamble. You'll be taking that gamble in a year. What this report says is how he would give the specifics, but interior is good for a year. It's a new sector. Oh, it's a bad, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say the figure, but you thought A would be the best scenario of the four. Um, I'm, looking, I'm also looking at C because that has something that I want to cover next year. I don't think the general fund should be paying a dime for this, and I've been adamant about that since day one. It's an enterprise fund. It is that simple. It is supposed to be self-supported. And another reason why I don't think the general fund should be taking a dime out of this is because we have another $109,000 payment we have to pay as well. So the bottom line is this. The council has to make a hard decision. I do not recommend you take a dime out of your general fund to do that. I think it's a water fund. It needs to be, again, self-supported. Um, you can wait three years to do this, absolutely, but you're still going to have the increase. If the general fund paid the amount for next year, then down the road, say in 2024 20, or 25, could they pay the general fund back then? Well, that's when you can look at scenario D, which that I don't have a problem with. But you guys got to understand, it, it is your decision at the end of the day. It is what you seven think is best to go.
say that. I said, no, that's what Mr. Lindsay said I preferred. Well, we discussed some options on the phone today, and I actually, what I said to Mr. Lindsay was between gifting, I mean, the general fund gifting 115000 compared to the other one, that's what I preferred between the two. If you really want to know my honest opinion between A, B, C, and D, it's B. That is up to council. I mean, you this this is not an administrator. No, yeah, that, if you guys want to wait three years. The question was why I was uh, between A and C the, the two different start rates. Yeah. Could we? Could you, if, if if that was if C was one that you wanted to go with, could it be pushed back? You can, but what's going to happen is you're you're risking the increase of cost of services. So what you get now for the price might be more expensive two or three years down. Yeah, I, I don't. I, we're, it's just we're just guessing. That one twenty-five is a ballpark. Which would be large? It's going to be expensive no matter how we do it. And, you know, we got to be responsible of what we're paying is going to give us the biggest bang for our buck. And all of this is a risk. The thing that worries me about the general fund is can there be unforeseen things happen to which we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot of taking money out of the general fund? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, if, but if we go with A or B, are we covered? better than if we were taking money away or out of the general fund. What was your question? I'm sorry. So if we take money out of the general fund, if something were to come and like we're we're out of money. You know, then you you have no money. Because okay. the water plant give, can't give money to the general fund. Alright, so if we if we take if we do A or B, if something big happens that's unforeseen, are we going to be better suited to deal with that financially? Yes, because at that point in time then your general fund will have the funds available to help offset it. Okay. So you need to pad your general fund so, more than you pad your water department. I think we need to protect ourselves in those types of situations. Well, I think C is, you know, pretty good for the repayment. You know, you take the money out for the three. We can pay it. That's great. That, that's what the scenario is. The last scenario D. D. No, I, you know, I don't particularly care for the high percentage rate in the beginning, but it does go down. There we go. So, no. A, A and B to me is, you know, I just think it's too high. Personally, this is my own personal thing. But I think B, you know, with, with the repayment back as a loan, the repayment back. And so that regenerates that person, that the general fund. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Now, I, me, I just, uh, I would hate to put ourselves in a situation where we have no money all over here. Can I be honest with you? you? We can probably sit here and think of 101 different A, B, C's, and D's, and D's, and F's. You know, Mr. Kicker's done a fantastic job of trying to weed out all the different scenarios to present the four that we feel is best to you guys. We can go back and forth, like I said, to figure out, all right, well, what's funding scenario G? What about funding scenarios? There's so many different ways this could be done, to be honest with you. It's almost, quite frankly, you guys have to pick the lesser of the two evils. Four evils in this particular case. So, but you guys want to, you might, at the end of the day, it's your decision. I would be protecting my general fund as much as I can because that's the one that can allocate money to anywhere it needs to go. The moment you deplete that, something happens on the water, water project, you're taking out a loan now to fix it and you're going to raise your, raise your increase or on your constituents anyway. So uh, there is no best possible solution for this. Again, this is not your guys' fault. It is not our fault. This is where we're at. If you guys want to forego the tower maintenance program altogether and run that risk, that could be a different funding scenario. You know, we can look at some other things, but we're at a critical point to where a decision needs to be made. And we brought this to you guys. When was the first time? I'm not using it as a dig, I'm saying, but it's been it's been a long time since we've revisited this. So I don't think it was a bridge. I don't think anybody's dancing around trying to avoid the inevitable. I mean, yeah, because these are new. These numbers are new as far as product, right? Yeah, I've never seen these before. So, um, 
<laughs> one of them is identical to the one we brought last time. And remember the email where I broke down um, low usage, medium usage households, and high usage? That's all. That was all there. And to give you the dollar amount, because everybody thinks the percentage is so high. Um, remember, I paid that water bill in here. And I think the low usage, which is your, mainly your seniors, 2,000 gallons a month, was, I think, $36 for the whole year increase, for the whole year. For the 20 or 25 percent increase, so the whole dollar was was a lot more manageable to to hear than hearing what a percentage was. Um, the high users, your large families that could use 11 to 15 thousand, we only have a couple large families that use that. The rest are all commercial businesses that use more than 10 thousand gallons, and I want to say they were in like 100 to 200 dollars more annually is what their their bill would go up. I don't, I don't like the idea of, of using money from the farm. I don't either. I, uh, you know, that thing needs to grow and to get healthy for whatever things that we may end up needing for unexpected costs, damages, <coughs> whatever it may be. I also like what you touched on earlier, Mr. Kiko, about depending on you know which one is you go with, or really any of them, actually, to a degree, is that will enable you to get you know go after bigger grants to hopefully start laying um, you know, some new plumbing under these uh, insurance we hopefully will be in the, in the future. So um, I know it's not going to be the popular answer I like to Not because I, mean, I know a lot of people are going to hear that. But, you know, when it comes to water, uh, I don't want to mess with it. It needs to be clean. It needs to be ready. It needs to be there for a new need. Uh, if you're talking, you know, sheriff deputies, and you need to cut one, okay. you can, in my opinion, you can make that argument from going from four deputies to one. Four deputies to three, but when it comes to water, and you know, Flint, Michigan went through a mess, and they're probably still going through it. I don't want to go five, ten years down the road after you know, I'm off council or whatever it may be, and someone coming back and saying that this city's water infrastructure is a mess. Um, you know, we, we hear about it all the time that the country's infrastructure is crumbling, and no one's taking care of it. I think it's our responsibility to take care of it, get it done. So that's where I stand. It's not popular, but I, I mean, I'll have to pay that increase. My wife, my kids are going to end up paying that. Any one of my family is. I know it's not popular, but that's what I want. I know no one else is going to say that, but I'm just being honest. Mr. On, on uh, D, what, why a three year repayment? Is there something that what we got to that's something we have to live with. Or, uh, well, I mean, you got to look at your ending balance, so we can't really do much over 35. No, I'm talking less. Uh, uh, I'm trying to re get the general fund back to where it needs to go in the shortest amount of time possible. Okay. Does that make sense? Just, yeah, we can split that over four or five. I was just looking at if you stretch that over sure. five to, to match the mm -hmm. payments back of the, sure. uh, of the 115. Mm -hmm. You basically you increase your reserves you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a little bit, not not a giant amount, but sure. fifteen thousand, fifteen four a year if you put over five instead of three. But I don't know if there was a reason for that. No. Yeah, the auditors have some set guidelines. Um, I reviewed oh, those yeah. prior to the repayment, and it is not ASAP, but it is quickly and as feasible as possible with certain stipulations and. Um, it's not very easy. It is a very uh, tedious thing to do this uh, loan repayment. There's a lot of stipulations you need to follow. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions before we, um, as far as what's going on? Because I'm assuming we're going to have to go down the line and get some, you know, some direction here because we're going to have to vote on this. I mean, like Randy said, there's always lots of, I mean, I could go through A to Z, but, you know, looking at other municipalities, rate structures. Uh, I went to, I've been to many RCAP um, classes where they teach you how to do rate structures. Industrial users, they want you, your industrial users to pay more. I don't think us as a new Carlisle and the business we got, if you want to make bad metals, pay more because they put a heavier usage on your utility. So yes, in New Carlisle, everybody pays their share per thousand gallons. So it seemed to be the simplest without punishing a specific group, industrial rates. I mean, there's numerous ways they do it. There's hundreds of ways that different towns do it. And this seemed to be the, the simplest, uh, kind of the best way to get where we needed to go. We just need a bird. Hmm? We need a bird. Or Aqua Falls. Or oh, Aqua Falls. Well, and like you said earlier, oh, no, 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 no. nine years, Nine years is a ways away still, and that payment comes off. 
freeze. There's multiple options. Sure. I like we just I we just need to get it to a place where we can move it in a good direction where it's a financially healthy enterprise zone. Because the general fund is, is looking a whole lot better than it is. Oh, yeah. It is. That's why I'm nervous right. taking the money out of it. And I, like, and I like the, yeah. I like the trend. Though. Sure. So um, just go down the line from there. Just say anything. not worth the risk when it comes to all the I would rather do this and actually do it right. And, uh, and that way we don't have to worry about it. To we're, if we were to pay for it in the general fund, we get ourselves in a situation, we have to take out another loan, so then not only are I mean, we're paying for it twice and spending more money. I wish we weren't in this situation. And another thing with the general fund, too, is thank you. It's always in the back of my head. Where the police line coming back up? That thing fails. Your general fund now is paid four hundred nineteen thousand dollars a year for police services. So that's another component to as to why it's not the best idea to maybe use general fund funds until we figure out when's the police levy up? 2019, 2020? Three more years. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan, do you have your See at this point to have the general fund pay that first payment, and then at some point if it, if we can pay it back through there, then pay it back. So I guess it would really be D, because that is the only the only one I believe that pays it back. So, 
Uh, I do agree that our tower, unfortunately, you know, does need work. And uh, wish I knew about years ago. But anyway, I like D because it's for the payback. I really do. Now, I, yeah, I agree. With you. Did you say B or D? D. 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 Yeah. And uh, because you say D? Yeah, D. Okay. Because of the payback. That's, that's why I like it. You know, if it's an enterprise fund, you know, it's like any other business. If you take a loan, you pay it back. Simple question. Thank you, sir, Mr. Warren. I hate them all. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment on hard work. <laughs> I hate your work. I did not That's say that. I know. <laughs> just to say the work. These are stressful times. I, right. I, I'm concerned because we're just talking that they, we, we need a fire levy. Uh, and then we're going to increase water rates. And, Fixed income, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I don't like. I don't like a. We either got a problem or we don't. Yeah. yeah. We either got a problem or we don't. And, and why are we going to put it off three years? Mm -hmm. That's that's why I don't like a. Is there a possibility that price could go up? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we're looking. Projected it to be higher than the, than any other option. Uh, I my gut instinct is is uh, I hate the rates on D. Uh, I, I uh, my gut instinct is C. Uh, using general fund money. I, I, would, I would like to see, I like the concept of paying it back. So it's a combination of C and B. Uh, and, and I don't know. C and B or C? I'm sorry, C and D. C and D. Or C and D with the payback, you know. Uh, we can amend the payback terms. I, 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 but I don't like the 40% rates of the, at the top, you know, and the full 40%. I, I don't. It just sounds a little more 2015. It sounds a little more palatable to me to go 2015 2 2. You're talking 1%. All right. 2015 2 2, the repayment that you've got on C, uh, turning that into a payback of a five year term on the general fund uh, on the bottom line. So, a combination of that is what I kind of like. On D, spread that over five spread years. Spread that over five. It makes it makes your payments uh, uh, about seventeen five or something. I just did it in my head. Uh, keep uh, it with the rates of C. Keep yeah. with the rates of C. Spread it out. Yeah, now we're taking, 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 taking the rates of C. Now, the problem is we don't have the bottom line numbers of what the right. full effects that that's going to do. But you, you borrow the money from the general fund as we do in C. Borrow, we borrow. Or, I'm sorry, as we do in D. We borrow as we do in D. Pay it back over five years, finishing it out in 2023. And that adds $15,000 to your bottom line carryover on each one of those years, okay? So, so you're of D. No. But use the, use the payment, the rates of C, 2015-22. But we also run the risk of spreading those out. And that's going to put us past that. You go... Of course, I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Well, three fire. years is the auditor recommendation, which they really don't recommend you using the open money at all, but they right. will allow you to do that. Right. But, and I understand what you're saying with that, spread it over five years. Do you think, and this is just honest discussion, yeah. keep it the way it is, because the closer we get to paying it off and the general fund is good to go, the general fund's good to go, because the general fund's going to need money, because when's the police levy up again? So the moment that that doesn't pass, we now have to have a lot more money out of the general fund. But so that failing is astronomically high because renewed levies very rarely fail. Well, very, almost almost 86 percent actually. It's like 85. I don't rest on that until we have the tally vote. 
Congress. Especially after the water rate raise. I mean, you may be exactly I'm comfortable with. Wow. Now, what you're saying, you're saying a hybrid. You like deeds. You just don't like the repayment terms. Is that what I'm getting at? I like three years. I like repaying. Okay. Uh, is there, are you okay with keeping D how it is then? No. I don't like the 40, the 25, 10, 5. I don't like that's a 39, that's a 30, that's a 40%, 40 percent increase. Uh, if you go 2015 to 2, it's 39. It's only 1%, but it's not a 25% right off the bat. But is that 1%? Are you risking that 1% for that one year out of the general yes, fund? Yes, I am. And you're okay with that? Yes, I am. That's your guys' decision. Absolutely. I, I just, I think it's more palatable for the raise, for the increase in the raise. Just the psychological sounding of 20, 15, 2, 2. I, you're going to raise it 1%, they're not going to be happy. So I know. Yeah. No, they're not going to be happy. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Sure. I agree with D with C rates. It's D, D with C rates. Yeah. See, I didn't know we could mix and match. I don't like any of them. Do they get paid back after four years? No, this should be paid back three. Yeah. If you keep it that. Are you following? <laughs> D with C rates. The problem is I don't know. Well, we're loading, we're loading the front end with the funds. Um, borrow. I mean, that could go both ways, Mr. Leffley. And just, again, for honest discussion. Sure. You have a 20% increase the first year on C. Right. And you have a 25% increase on D. Right. Or over that second year, you have a 10% increase, opposed to, and then you have a 15% increase on C, right? Was I looking at the right one? D and C? Yeah. 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 And then you have a 2 and 2. Right. You're saying the two years is higher on three. The first year is higher on one, but the overall yeah. two years. Yeah, I, I mean. the same. I mean, on the second overall year. Overall two years, you're getting. You're really just dispersing the 5%. Exactly. Right. That's all you're doing. Exactly. 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 But it sounds the, yeah, better. The, sound, the big thing is when percent. you had that lower percentage, 20 than, than 10, or 20 than 15, or 25 the other way around, there was a big difference of compounding that money. I didn't realize how much of a change it made when you compound the first rate, okay. add on the second rate, add on the third. Remember, oh, yeah. that rate oh, yeah. yeah, the compound yeah. made a huge difference in that bottom line dollar. Yes, as soon so. as I would switch 2% or 5% and switch it around, yeah. that's why I said I had to front load. I had no, I mean, that nobody's going to give me all this money from, I mean, there's no federal bailout program coming to me. So, um, yeah. and another thing with DNC is D only has three years of increases while C has four. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough decision. It, it is. It is. Well, could we do that? I, and, and I, I mean, I look at it as a, at, at that point, as a perpetual 2%. Yeah. Okay. 2%. Yeah. You're not going to need a perpetual 2% after 2026. No, you shouldn't, but you shouldn't. Sure. Well, I got you. well, I mean, it's always nice to have the money there. Reserve. Okay, so mm, I'll be honest with you, I don't have legislation for the hybrid ones, but I'm sure we can figure something out on the fly here. I have a question. Uh, well, we still not done. We I mean, got Rick. Yeah. Rick had to say. I have probably the dumbest question that you have ever been asked in your life, but I'm going to ask. I'm not ashamed to ask the question. No. <laughs> we have two water towers. Do you absolutely need a water tower? Well, yes, you do. We okay. do. And the reason I'm asking that is there's not a pump big enough, is what you're saying, or pumps big enough that they will run on demand and supply water anytime you need it to the city. Yeah, yeah. Because I did to, some reading on this. Yeah, you, uh, systems that run pressure relief exactly. are an issue. Big time issue. They are? Okay. Yeah, when you run a tower, I mean, you get uh, uh, the life expectancy of the tower when you maintain it. Right. It's all gravity. See, when, when you pump, when, when our pumps turn on, Plus our pressure pump. skyrockets and goes back off. Our water tower takes that brunt of that okay. for the most part. Okay. Instead of the residential plumbing systems, that's where you typically have higher pressures and they'll, they'll blow systems out. Okay, because I did read a little, about, a little bit about it. They're there. They're there, there are a few cities out there who do it, and I was just wondering. Okay. When our tower goes out of service to be in use, they will put pressure reliefs on. Okay. To, to relieve the pressure from... Yeah, because Adams Tower is only 100,000 gallons, and it's going to be hard for it to feed the city by itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, you know, if you can do hybrids, um, that's the best thing I've heard tonight. <laughs> I don't like any of them. You did a horrible job. I don't like any of them. <laughs> you know. No, I'm just kidding. Was, I, I, it was rushed I, through. I wouldn't have, no, I'm teasing you, Randy. I wouldn't have your job. But no. uh, I was going back and forth. I didn't even think about what he was saying, and I agree with him 100%. And if somebody wants to say I couldn't think for myself, that's fine. I did not think of that, but uh, I do like it. So, okay. That's, that's the whole point of these work sessions to come yeah. together and yeah, say this is what we think, this is what you guys think. That's why you're hey, hey, you guys issues. have the final say. So, however, you seven want to move forward, that's our job to say okay. You Unless know? you have a magic ball. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I think this is a very good work session. You know, to come and, you know, this is our stance on it, this is your stance on it, and you come to this hybrid thing, fantastic. Yeah. I like I like it too. I wanted to say I like it too because I'm glad that we get to hear it. Everybody. So keep the road yeah, so about so what we can just keep the road so I need to provide a copy of it. Of course, we need to do it by the way. C rates on D. C rates on D.
It could be. Can we be honest with you? I don't have a printing, something here to print out the order. I mean, does that matter? No, you, you can sign it. Uh, pass that around, we're all ready. Uh, uh, we're on shaky ground. Yeah, I think we're on shaky ground. Very shaky ground. Why you just hitting the house down? If we do it, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we can't do that because even though it's emergency ordinance, we still have to give notification to the newspaper. Yeah, that's right. you know, so that's just okay. that's fishy. Okay. It's true. Okay. It's, it can be, it has to be an emergency. Mr. Bridge, how, many, how much time do you No, it doesn't need to be an emergency ordinance. We can introduce it tonight. Yeah. And, and then let it sit. Mr. Bridge? Yeah. Can you need five minutes? Um, well, you know if that sounds good. We really know. All right. Think about this. So we're doing D with C rates, right? Yes. Okay. So D. I got 1753 up there. Yeah, that's the same. Brand new. You recess for like five or ten. Let's take a break while he's working on this. Okay. Take a break. Suspend the rules of council to add ordinance 1753 to the agenda. Mr. Moore, move to suspend the rules of council to add the ordinance 17 53. Second. I have a second by Mr. Rickle. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. Okay. By Mr. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Mr. Smith? That's just, he just. Oh, he went to Washington. He went to Washington. Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay's on suspending the rules. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Bethley. Yes. Mr. Craig Walker. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Now you can read it. Can I go now? Yes, yes, you may. Okay. Uh, ordinance 1753, an ordinance amending section 1043.05 of the codified ordinance of the city of New Carlisle regarding charges for the use of the municipal water supply. Whereas council has determined that, is, that is, it is necessary for adjustments to be made in the rate structure for water service provided by the city of New Carlisle. And whereas the city of New Carlisle is in need of raising water rates to account for the increased cost of operations and to participate in the tower maintenance program. And whereas the city council should pass this ordinance, the general fund will loan the water department $115,500 in 2018, which is the equivalent cost of the first year of the tower maintenance program. And whereas the water fund will repay the general fund the $115,500 over the of three years was a payment of 38,500 in 2019, 38,500 in 2020, and 38,500 in 2021. Now, therefore, the municipality of city, the municipality of New Carlisle hereby ordains that section 1043.05 of the codified ordinance of the city of New Carlisle be amended by deleting in its entirely and substituting with the following. 1043.05. Excuse me, charges for charges for use of municipal water supply. One. There is hereby established a charge per 1,000 gallons of water used from the municipal water supply as follows. A, commencing with usage beginning January 1, 2018 and continuing through December 31st, 2018 usage, a charge of $8.74. B, commencing with usage beginning January 1, 2019 and continuing through December 31st, 2019 usage, a charge of $10.05. C, commencing with usage beginning January 1, 2020 and continuing through December 31st, 2020 usage, a charge of $10.25. In 
and D. Commencing with the usage beginning January 1, 2020 and continuing through December 31st, 2020 usage. A charge of $10.46. Past this day, uh, 17 blah, and all the signature stuff. Yes, you're right. Uh, D is going to be 2021. I read it wrong because I just copied and pasted from the last one. So let me reread section D, and I do apologize. D, commencing with usage beginning January 1, 2021, and continuing through December 31st, 2021, usage, a charge of $10.46. Nice Thank you, sir.